Greetings and welcome to C and C++ Programming. You are assigned a lab where you are asked to input 10 numbers and find the sum of all odd numbers, the sum of all even numbers, and the sum of all numbers. You are also asked to find the range of the input values. Here is the lab assignment. Let's look closely at the definition to determine the input, output, and processing to satisfy the requirements of the project. First, determine the inputs. Those are stated right at the beginning of the project definition. Read 10 numbers as integers. Next, determine the outputs. Sum of all odd numbers, sum of all the even numbers, sum of all numbers, display the range of numbers. Those are the lowest and highest values. The project definition also states that your program should not ask the user to enter the even and odd numbers separately or that numbers are entered in any order. After we have determined the inputs and outputs, we need to see what needs to be done to get the program to take the inputs and create the outputs. This is called processing. Here is the pseudocode. Loop equals 1. Initialize the loop counter. While loop count is less than or equal to 10, I need to read the numbers from the keyboard, compute the total of all the odd numbers, compute the total of all the even numbers, compute the total of all numbers, determine the smallest and largest number, and increment the loop count. End loop. We'll keep going through this loop 10 times until we have all of our numbers processed. It looks like there's one more thing that needs to be included in the program. Add input validation to reject negative numbers and non-numeric data. There's also an extra credit section of the assignment. In addition to displaying the three sums and range, display the average of all ten numbers with two digits past the decimal. To help you get started programming in C or C++, I have provided you with the code in both C and C++ for the first part of the project. It is going to be up to you to complete the project for the required input validation and extra credit if you choose to do it. Here is a sample run of the program. Ten different numbers are input. At the bottom, the program displays the sum of odd numbers the sum of even numbers, the sum of all numbers, the lowest value and the highest value. You do not need to use the set of numbers that I chose. For your lab report, you need to show four screens. Run the program with 10 input values. Run the program with a different set of 10 numbers. Run the program showing what happens when a negative value is input. Run the program showing what happens if non-numeric input is entered. I have provided the hypo chart for your lab report this time. You will need to complete the hypo chart on future lab reports. Hypo stands for Hierarchical Input Process Output. The input section is simple, 10 numbers. The output section for this assignment is also fairly simple. Display the three sums, the lowest and highest value. The process section of the hypo chart is the most complex of the three. It contains a brief pseudocode description of the processing that is to be done. Pseudocode is a high-level description of the program in a human-readable format. It typically does not contain the variable declarations or the syntax-specific details that are necessary for a program to compile. When it is your turn to fill out the hypo chart, you will not get credit for this part of the lab assignment if you just paste in your C or C++ code instead of using pseudocode for the process section. The concept of structured programming states that all programs can be created with only three constructs, sequence, selection, and repetition, or a combination of any of them. Sequence is the easiest to understand. Program steps are executed sequentially, one after another. Many times, the order in which the steps are executed is very important. Other times, it does not matter. For example, if I were baking a cake, it may not matter very much whether I put the egg in the bowl and then the flour, or I reverse the two before mixing them with water. 
However, it would make a lot of difference if I put the cake batter in a 9 by 13 baking dish and placed it in the oven for an hour and 30 minutes, took it out, and then turned the oven to 350 degrees. Yuck! We will see the same thing in programming. It does not really matter if you input the hours before the pay rate when computing a paycheck, but you cannot compute and print the paycheck before you input the hours and pay rate. The most common statement when doing a selection is the IF statement. The IF statement starts by testing a logical expression that must evaluate to either true or false. If the expression evaluates to true, then the rest of the IF statement is executed. The IF statement can also have an ELSE clause with the statement that gets executed when the expression evaluates to a false. The repetition structure gives us the capability of looping back and requesting a block of code over and over again. The repetition statement is somewhat similar to the IF statement in that it also needs to evaluate a logical expression. If the expression evaluates to true, then the program goes back to the beginning of the loop. If the expression evaluates to false, after the loop ends and the program starts executing code that is placed after the loop. C and C++ have three types of repetition statements, while, do while, and for. The while loop evaluates the test condition at the top of the loop, as shown in the flowchart. The do while has the test at the bottom of the loop. The for loop is typically used as a counting loop and it will execute code in a loop a specified number of times. The rectangular box in the repetition structure is referred to as the body of the loop. One of the most important things to consider when creating a loop is to make sure that the test condition eventually evaluates to false so that the loop will end. The most common ways to end a loop are to use a counter that reaches some predetermined value. Another way to end the loop is to look at the data being processed and stop the loop when it recognizes some predetermined value, such as a zero. The piece of data that is used to determine the end of the data is called a sentinel value. As mentioned before, sequence repetition selection can be combined. In this flowchart, the body of the loop has a selection statement. If the input value is odd, one set of instructions is executed. Else, another set of instructions is executed when the input value is even. In this case, the selection is implemented as an if-else, and it occurs within the body of the file loop. Program Organization Most of the programs you will write will be organized like this. Use comments to place a title block at the top of each file. The title block identifies what this part of the program does as well as the date, version, and programmer's name. It can be very frustrating later on when there are many files that make up one program and you look at a file that contains code and have no idea what the code does. You then need to reanalyze or reverse engineer the code instead of just looking at a short description at the title block. Many companies want the programmer to place their name in the file in case anybody has questions about the file. The date and version number also help identify the latest version of the program. The first part of the real code contains the include statements and any global variables and constants. Next is the main body of the program with its four subsections, list of variables, input, process, output. Here are samples of C and C++ code that implement most of the project. Don't worry about reading the small print yet. It will be shown in more detail. At the top is the title block with a brief description of what the program does. You should place your name and date when you type in the program yourself. Then comes the include statements, constants, and global variables. There are no global variables in this program. Next is the body of the program. Inside it are the definitions for the local variables, the input, 
process and output. Finally, the return zero statement ends the program. Look closely at the title block. The C version of the program is using the C style comments, starting a block of comments with a slash star and ending the block with a star slash. The C++ version uses the C++ style comments. Each C++ comment starts with a slash slash and stops at the end of the line. C++ programs can use either style of comments. Most modern C compilers will also take the C++ style comments. You can use either style when you write your program. I just placed them here to illustrate the different comment styles. The C program has pound include open angle bracket stdio.h close angle bracket. This is pronounced stdio.h and stands for the standard IO header file. It does not refer to a recording studio for a rock band. A pound defined is used in the C program to define a constant. Look closely at it. There are no semicolons at the end of the pound defined statement. Actually, pound define provides a text replacement similar to the find and replace feature in a word processor. Anytime the compiler sees number underscore count in the program, it replaces those characters with one zero. For example, Anywhere in the C program that the character's number count appear, they're replaced with the character's 1-0 before the program is actually compiled. Make sure that you don't put a semicolon after the 10, or number count will be replaced with 10 semicolon. Now, let's look at the C++ code. There are two include statements. The first include stdafx.h is only used in most versions of Microsoft Visual Studio. It refers to a pre-compiled header file. Pre-compiled header files are a great way for reducing the compile time on extremely large projects. You won't notice any difference in the compile time on the small projects for our class. If you lose if you leave the pound include stdafx.h statement off with a Microsoft Visual Studio project, you must also unclick precompiled header selection when the project is first being built, and you must change the int main line to read int main open parentheses int argc comma character star argv open square bracket close square bracket close parentheses. When using Microsoft Visual Studio, it is necessary to first turn off precompiled header. If either you build a C language project or you do not want the pound include stdafx.h file in a C project. Two more things to notice in the C project the pound include stdafx.h line uses double quotes. Quote, quote, around the stdafx.h file name. The double quotes indicate that the include file is in the same directory as the project. The pound include IO stream uses the angle brackets, open angle bracket, close angle bracket, around the file name. The angle brackets indicate that the file is located in the include folder that belongs to the compiler. Pound include open angle bracket, IO stream, close angle bracket, tells the compiler how to build a program that uses C in and C out. The using namespace std semicolon line says that the file is going to be using the standard namespace. I guess that did not tell you very much, but it makes the program easier to write. If you leave off this line, it will be necessary to place std colon colon in front of every place that uses cn, cout, and several other built-in functions. So instead of just typing cout less than less than quote enter a number quote semicolon, you'll need to type std colon colon cout less than less than enter a number. Now let's compare the difference in how C and C++ declare a constant. C uses the pound defined statement that causes a text replacement when the program is compiled. 
C++ is much more elegant by using const int number count equal 10 semicolon we now actually have a 10 stored in memory as an integer we now have a data type int associated with a constant instead of just some characters that are used to replace text before the program is compiled and the semicolon is used one more thing to notice in both the C and C++ programs, it is common practice to declare constants using all capital letters. This helps to make them stand out. Except for the input and output statements, printf and scanf underscore s for C and cout and cn for C++, the rest of the code is identical for the C and C++ programs. They both start off defining the variables and start the while loop. They use their own output and input statements, then proceed to the code that performs the logic of adding up all the odd numbers, the even numbers, and determining the lowest and highest values, called range. Once the while loop has processed all 10 input values, the while loop ends and the program can display the results. The C program uses a series of printf statements, and the C++ program uses a series of cout statements. Let's look at the loop control more carefully. The variable named input counter is used to control the loop, and it is declared as an integer. The while open parentheses input counter is less than or equal to number count close parentheses has a block of code connected to it, starting with the open curly brace and ending with a closed curly brace. The very last thing in the loop is the input counter plus plus semicolon. This causes a 1 to be added to the input counter each pass through the loop. This loop counts from 1 to 10 and stops when the loop counter reaches the value of 11. As you see more code, you will notice that it is more common to count from 0 instead of 1. The data type char and bool are also considered integral data types and can be used to control a loop. The float or double data type should never be used to control a counting loop such as a while or a for. For example, if the double data type is used, the value in it might be 9.9999999 instead of 10.0. In either case, the value might be rounded up to a 10 when it is displayed, but the true value of 9.9999999 would actually be in memory. Looping while the value is less than or equal to a 10 would cause the loop to not stop until the value of 10.9999999 is reached. In that case, the program would loop 11 times instead of 10. A prompt is a message that the program displays on the screen requesting input from the user. The word comes from the theater. Think of a teleprompter that puts up text for someone who is reading a speech. If there are no prompt message and the program only used scanf or cn to read the number from the keyboard, the only thing that would show up on the screen would be a flashing cursor and people would have no idea what to do or even if the program was working. The C language version of the program uses printf to display the prompt message. Printf stands for print formatted. The first thing in the printf statement is the format string. In this case, it is only a simple text message. Look closely at enter a number colon space quote. There is a space after the colon, although the space does not have anything to do with making the program work correctly. The space is there to provide a separation between the prompt and the user's input. It just makes the program look better. Otherwise, when the user types a number, it will be right next to the colon character. The scanf statement in a C program is a little more complicated to understand. The first thing to notice is that I'm using scanf underscore s instead of just plain scanf. The plain scanf has been deprecated, which means that it is old and out of date. 
The original scanf could cause problems when reading a string of text characters if someone typed more characters than scanf was expecting. This would cause a buffer overflow, causing the program to crash or provide a way for evil people to insert a virus. Microsoft has updated their version of scanf and call it scanf underscore s. The underscore s means secure. Apple has updated their version of scanf but still calls it scanf. Look closely at the format string for scanf. It is quote percent d quote the percent character in the scanf format string indicates a replaceable parameter is to follow the format string. Quote, percent D, quote, indicates that scanf will be inputting an integer and that the user expected to input it as a decimal number. Now look at ampersand number. The number is the name of the variable we defined with int number earlier in our program. That number will be receiving the data from scanf when the user types it in. The ampersand means address of. Since number is defined in our part of the program, we need to give scanf the memory address of number so that scanf will know where to store the data. The ampersand can have an additional meaning in C++ that will be covered later. We use cout and cn in C++. cout stands for console out and cn stands for console in. They're pronounced C out and C in, not count or sin. C out uses the insertion operator, less than, less than, and C in uses the extraction operator, greater, greater. They are referred to by these names with the idea that C out is inserting data into the output stream and C in is extracting data from the input stream. The easiest way to remember them is to think of arrows and look at the direction they are pointing. Data is going out from C out and data is going uh, from C in into a variable. The expression inside the parentheses of the if statement reads number percent two equal equal one. In the order of precedence, Add, subtract, multiply, and divide all have a higher precedence than the equal equal test for equality. The percent mod operator performs an integer division and returns the remainder instead of the quotient. The remainder for any number divided by 2 is either going to be 0 or 1. If the remainder is a 1, then the number is odd. If the number is odd, then add the number to the sum of odd numbers. The sum of odd numbers was initially set to zero outside the while loop when the variable was declared. Now, each time through the loop, we will either add the input number to either sum of odd numbers or the sum of even numbers. The statement sum of all numbers plus equal number is outside the if else statement, therefore is giving us the sum of all numbers. Looking at this set of numbers, it is fairly easy to determine the smallest and largest number. 4 is the smallest, and 22 is the largest. The little league coach would shout, Good eye, good eye, when the batter didn't swing at a ball that was out of range. Good eye, good eye, means good eye, good eye. An algorithm for determining the smallest and largest values needs to be a little more sophisticated. When developing an algorithm for a computer program, we need to start off by saving the first value as both the smallest and largest. As we read each successive value, compare it to the current value in smallest and largest and see if we need to update either of these values. Let's see how it works to determine the smallest value. With 17 as the min value, when the 5 is red, it is smaller than 17, so now 5 is saved as the min value. When 9 is red, it is bigger than 5, so 5 stays as the min value. When 4 is red, it is smaller than the 5, so 4 replaces the 5 as the new min value. As we keep reading more and more numbers, 
None of them are smaller than the 4, so 4 remains as the min value. This similar process occurs in determining the largest value, except we compare it to see if the new number is larger than the current max value. By the end of the loop, the smallest and largest values have been determined. The last part of input process output is the output. Examples for both C and C++ are shown. The printf statement in C uses backslash in to move the cursor down to the next line on the screen. Although C++ could also use the backslash in, it is more common for C++ to use the end L for end of line. Make sure that you do not type end 1 where the last character is the number 1 instead of lowercase l. Just keep thinking of the word line for end of line. Extra spaces are added to the strings to get the columns to line up so that they look nice on the screen. Again, the percent %d in the printf format string indicates that an integer value is to follow the format string and it is to be displayed as a decimal value. There are two parts of the program to be completed. The required section is for you to reject negative numbers and invalid entries. Refer to one of the previous lab assignments and adapt the code from those examples and place it in this program. Look at this program to determine where numbers are input from the keyboard. Then you should be able to figure out where to insert the code to reject negative values and illegal entries. Make sure that the program displays an appropriate message and then does not process the bad data. The extra credit section should be fairly simple. The average is computed by taking the sum of all the numbers and dividing it by a count of how many numbers were entered. There are two problems to be solved for the extra credit. Numbers are to be entered as integers, but the average needs to display the result with two digits past the decimal. That means that the average must be declared as a double data type, and at least either the numerator or the denominator of the divisor must be a double. The other problem is that you need printf or cout to display two digits past the decimal. Refer to the Paycheck version 1.0 lab. In order to receive the extra credit points, the required section rejecting negative values and illegal entries must be completed and the extra credit section must be submitted when the lab report is submitted and not at a later date. Have fun completing this project and I look forward to seeing your lab reports. Bye-bye.